well, as I just said to you a few seconds, again, a, a really entertaining game if you were a neutral, but a hard one for both set of fans, I suppose. Well, you're sitting 2 nothing down. If I was an Aaron United fan, I'd be delighted with a point. Uh, possibly could have got more. You know, they had a, a few chances. But if you analyse the game, uh, we were well on top in the first half. Uh, two great goals, scored in the first minute, scored in the last minute uh, the first half. And, uh, you know, very, very few teams come back at us uh, at 2 nothing. Um, I think we could have uh, defended the two goals we lost better. Uh, but Grab will not be happy. Equally, Big Rab kept us in the game with a few good saves later on. So ultimately, if you, if you look at it, we've had a few chances as well. Uh, we've scored two great goals. 2-2 um, two, two is probably a fair result. I think anyone who gets a chance to watch this match will really bow down to that fantastic strike just before half-time by Ian, Ian Campbell there. It was a classic. Yeah, it was a good strike. Yeah, he's been... He did it a couple of weeks back as well. Um, he's got that in his locker. He almost done it again in the second half. Um, but actually, Martin, I'm just disappointed we didn't uh, close the game down. You know, the manager of Arthur Salt would be saying 2 0 half at half time. We'll be disappointed. No, he won three points. I think you're absolutely right. In the first half, it looked like you were very comfortable. You got the two goals very early. Caught your United slipping quite a bit there with that very ah, early attack. Yeah. But uh, you would have thought that that was the team, the team that was going to go ahead and score more goals in the second half. I thought that. I would have thought that. But equally, I can say to you, I thought the referee was having a reasonable, comfortable game. and He did a silly thing. He booked uh, Ian Campbell for time-wasting, which nobody in the ground seemed. And I thought he was trying to be a smart guy, you know. And that started the whole... The whole thing. I mean, I didn't think uh, the right back should be sent off. I thought it was a silly decision by the referee. Um, never ever a sending off, in my opinion. If you're getting sent off like that, you'll get you'll get sent off in the warm up. If you're getting sent off for that, never in a hundred years that sending off. And I thought the referee lost it for a spell for a twenty minute spell, where he's going to be flashing cards. That, uh, my fullback tells me that all he did was say something to the referee, and the referee worked out a card. I think referees are, are silly. Uh, they're, they're governed by people upstairs. It didn't matter to people upstairs. You're in charge of the football match. Do what you think is right. Never mind what a supervisor's saying. Um, however, I didn't think, you know, uh, I, I would be close to straws to say uh, a result. I, I draw always me. You know, so a, a fair result, to be fair. Big question is Michael Travis. Is he okay? Uh, he seemed to take a nasty one. I'm going to find you know, um, Chris Templeman's not trained for three weeks. Danny Denham's not trained for three weeks. Michael Dunlop's out. Um, what do you call him? Travis has got a dull one today. Uh, Derek Young's a big player for us. He's not. He's unavailable. That's Big Rob's first game back. Scott Gallagher's way back to Hearts. So there's a lot to happen in the start of the second quarter. We need to get himself sorted out for January. Another thing as well, we, we were very impressed by Kevin Nichols' performance today. We thought it was absolutely excellent, especially in the first half. Uh, nullified Jordan Preston, who's been scoring goals for fun. No, it was a battle with that. I thought Kevin did well. well. He's a big, he's a, uh, for a young lad, he's got a lot of strength about him, the Preston. Uh, protects the ball, length's reasonable. Uh, Kevin Nichols is an experienced player. Um, Hi, the fellow there, Kevin. Um, I've got a reasonable side, though. I've got a good side. People keep telling me I've got an uh, old side. I've not got an old side. I've got six players there are under 21. There's maybe in the league got that. Right? So that, that puts, you know, that puts that one in, out into touch. Um, but um, we've got good players. You know, we, we are now a recognised uh, first division side or second division side we, we've been in the playoffs seven times out of eight in the last eight years so we've recognised that we're a reasonable side uh, but we've got a wee bit of work to do now uh, because what happens then is your demands your standards are remain high 
Um, Air United, you would have to say, Air United is a far bigger club than Forfa. They're not a better club than Forfa. Forfa's a very, very good club. That's why I'm, I've been here 10 years. But they're a big club, Air United, and so is them fell in. And you have to live with that. And managers of their clubs have got to live with that. The expectation level of Air United and them fell in would be far higher than Forfa. And a manager of their club, anything less than winning the championship will be looked upon as a disappointment. But if you, your, your goals are very simple. We need to stay in the league and hopefully reach the playoffs. So. You always tell me it's about those last few weeks that if you're in the right place, that's what matters. You always say that. Yeah, I've never seen a championship win before Christmas, ever. <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of the, as I like Dawson says, there's a lot of water to go over the bridge. I say, Do you know me under the bridge, Alan? However, like, Air Night is a formidable side. It's quite impressive. So, um, we'll get on, mate, and see what's in front of us. Well, you've caught a bit cold early on in this match and it made it quite a tough one to get back into and being 2-0 down at half-time, I don't think there was many people on the ground thought we were going to get back. Except us. Uh, you know, we uh, we always thought we could. I, I thought we were poor in the first half, but it was a travesty we were 2-0 down. Uh, uh, you know, I, I thought for the 25 minutes before half-time we started to get into a rhythm and moved the ball about the pitch reasonably quickly. Ross Doherty to the fore. And uh, and then their their left backs hit a great, an unbelievable strike from 25 yards. Can't do anything about that. But the first goal was unbelievably sloppy from us, from three or four people who I've spoke to. Um, and you know we lost a goal like that at Airdrie and gave us a mountain to climb, and we claimed that we can't keep doing that. In saying that, it was a game we could and should have won in the second half, even when we went down to ten men. We were uh, that's the best we've played under me in the second half. We were absolutely outstanding. I think you have to pick out a couple of players today. Ross Doherty was absolutely exceptional in midfield. I said to him in the dressing room, I've, I've watched football for a, for a lot of years, and, and, and particularly at this level in the Championship, uh, maybe not in the Premier League, but that's as good a performance from a centre midfield player as I've seen. He was top draw in everything he did. His passing, his movement, his tackling, his covering of the ground, his heading of the ball. We even got forward the two or three times, nearly scored with a header, couldn't quite get it. He was uh, he epitomised everything that I want in a footballer. He was he was different class. Mikey Donald also when he came in gave you a completely different option, incredible speed and yeah. uh, he, he pierced his way through the defence a number of times, created three, four different chances in a very quick period. Yeah, I mean Mikey and Robbie were great. Robbie Crawford I thought was terrific. But uh, Mikey for the first time uh, I know the supporters might not see it, but he's been training really, really brilliantly. But the last couple of times he's come on, he hasn't done well. And, and I've been on him, he needs to transfer the training into playing, and he did that today. And it means he's a real threat for us. You know, he's, he's, if he keeps performing like that, he'll be knocking on the door. Because Paddy Boyle is a different type of fullback to, to Nicky. He likes somebody in front of him to play with, to pass the ball to, to go beyond, to play one twos. And Mikey can be that. He was, uh, and you're right about the pace. At this level, he's got searing pace, and he was terrific. So I, I'm really, really pleased with the contribution of the subs. I mean, I, I don't think Alan Forrest had his best game today. I think he was targeted, uh, and he was bullied. Um, I think Jamie Adams. It was just the acid stuff. I think Jamie at times is a little bit tentative in the acid stuff. Um, he's a huge player for us though, when, it, when we play in the grass. So uh, we made those changes, and Jordan. Did okay, wasn't himself, and we felt he was getting nothing from the referee, so that's why we made that change. And Ross came on and got a goal. Um, listen, it was, uh, I, I'm gutted we didn't win, but very, very proud of how we played. I think again, you can see with that great travelling support again, the way they, they relished actually getting even a point out of that. They saw a team that wanted to fight for you and try and get the victory. And that's maybe something that. Uh, that they hadn't been doing for a long while, and I think the fans are beginning to recognise that. Well, it's a new team. This is a new season, and uh, I said it would take time, and uh, they're beginning to gel. And um, we, we're here, we're in for the long haul. Our target's to be in the playoffs, and who knows where we can go. But we have got a number. We, we still need to add in January window. I'll be speaking to the chairman about that, but um, terrific today. I mean, the, the never say die attitude, but the, the standard of the football and, and I've got to say, the United supporters and the town should be so proud of the, how fit these boys are for part-time footballers. I mean, there's not a touch of fat in any of them. Uh, really, really fit, fit boys.